You're listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 338. We are continuing in the book of Daniel, and one of the angels is speaking in one of the longest chapters I've seen in the Bible so far. Just imagine some huge movie series you might have seen, like all the Marvel movies or all nine Star Wars movies, and imagine telling somebody everything that happened from beginning to end, giving only the overview of the plot as we went. That's sort of what this angel is doing with Daniel. Of course, he's not talking about a movie, but real events. Now, many scholars believe this time period to cover about 375 years during the reign of Alexander the Great, and of course, the events before and after his rule. So to some people, this passage is the most convincing passage in the whole Bible, that it truly can prophesy future events that really happen and are proven through history. While others claim that the book of Daniel was written after all those events had happened. But in any case, we can get from the message that God is in control of major historical events. We're also continuing in the New Testament. And in 1 John chapter 4, John talks all about love, that it comes from God, and without love, you really don't know God. Well, he goes into much more detail on that. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Daniel chapter 11. The angel is speaking to Daniel. During the first year that Darius the Mede was king, I stood up to support Michael in his fight against the Prince of Persia. Now then, Daniel, I tell you the truth. Three more kings will rule in Persia, then a fourth king will come, who will be much richer than all the other kings of Persia before him. He will use his riches to get power and turn everyone against the kingdom of Greece. Then a very strong and powerful king will come who will rule with great power. He will do anything he wants. Just as he comes to power, his kingdom will be broken up and scattered in all directions. He will not be divided among his descendants, and it will not be ruled in the same way, as that kingdom will be pulled up and given to other people. The southern king will become strong, but then one of his commanders will defeat him. The commander will begin to rule, and he will be very powerful. Then, after a few years, the southern king and that commander will make an agreement. The daughter of the southern king will marry the northern king. She will do this to bring peace, but she and the southern king will not be strong enough. People will turn against her and against the one who brought her to that country. And they will turn against her child and against the one who helped her. But someone from her family will come to take the southern king's place. He will attack the armies of the northern king and go into that king's strong fortress. He will fight and win. He will take their gods and the metal idols and their expensive things made from silver and gold. He will take those things away to Egypt. Then he will not bother the northern king for a few years. The northern king will attack the southern kingdom, but he will lose, and then he will go back to his own country. The northern king's sons Prepare for war. They will get a large army together. It will move through the land very quickly, like a powerful flood. That army 
will fight all the way to the strong fortress of the Southern King. Then the Southern King will become very angry and march out to fight against the Northern King. The Northern King will have a large army, but he will lose the war. The Northern Army will be defeated, and those soldiers will be carried away. The Southern King will be very proud, and he will kill thousands of soldiers from the Northern Army. But he will not continue to be successful. The Northern King will get another army that will be larger than the first one. After several years, he will attack. His army will be very large, with many weapons. In those times, many people will be against the Southern King. Some of your own people who love to fight will rebel against the Southern King. They will not win, but they will make this vision come true. Then, the Northern King will come. He will build ramps up to the walls and will capture a strong city. The Southern Army will not have the power to fight back. Even the best soldiers from the Southern Army will not be strong enough to stop the Northern Army. The Northern King will do whatever he wants. No one will be able to stop him. He will gain power and control in the beautiful land and he will have the power to destroy it. The Northern King will decide to use all his power to fight against the Southern King, and he will make an agreement with the Southern King. The King of the North will let one of his daughters marry the Southern King so that he can defeat the Southern King. And those plans will not succeed. His plans will not help him. Then the Northern King will turn his attention to the cities along the coast. will defeat many of them. But then, the commander will put an end to the pride of that Northern King. He will turn his pride into shame. After that happens, the Northern King will go back to the strong fortresses of his own country. But he will be weak and will fall. He will be finished. After the Northern King, there will be a new ruler who sends out tax collectors so that he can live like a king. After a few years, he will be destroyed. Although he will not die in battle, that ruler will be followed by a very cruel and hated man who will not have the honor of being from a king's family he will become a ruler by being dishonest. He will attack the kingdom when the people feel safe. He will defeat large and powerful armies. He will even defeat the leader with the agreement. Many nations will make agreements with that cruel and hated ruler, but he will lie and trick them. He will gain much power, but only a few people will support him. When the richest countries feel safe, that cruel and hated ruler will attack them. He will attack at just the right time and will be successful where his ancestors were not successful. He will take things from the countries he defeated. He will give them to his followers. He will plan to defeat and destroy strong cities. He will be successful but only for a short time. That very cruel and hated ruler a very large army. He will use that army to show his strength and courage. He will attack the Southern King. The Southern King will gather a very large and powerful army and go to war. But the people who are against him will make secret plans and the Southern King will be defeated. People who were supposed to be good friends of the Southern King will try to destroy him. His army will be defeated. Many of his soldiers will be killed in battle. Those two kings 
will want to make trouble. They will sit around the table planning their lies. But it will not do either one of them any good. Because God has set a time for their end to come. The Northern King will go back to his own country with great wealth. Then he will decide to do bad things against the Holy Agreement. He will do the things he planned. And then he will go back to his own country. And at the right time, the Northern King will attack the Southern King again. But this time, he will not be successful as he was before. Ships from Cyprus will come and fight against the Northern King. He will see those ships coming and be afraid. Then he will turn back and take out his anger on the Holy Agreement. He will turn back and help those who stop following the Holy Agreement. The Northern King will send his army to do terrible things to the temple in Jerusalem. They will stop the people from offering the daily sacrifice. Then they will do something really terrible. They will set up that terrible thing that causes destruction. The Northern King will use lies and smooth talking to trick those who stop following the Holy Agreement. So they will sin even more. But those who know God and obey Him will be strong. They will fight back. Those wise teachers will help the other people understand what is happening. But even they will have to suffer persecution. Some of them will be killed with swords. Some of them will be burned or taken prisoner. Some of them will have their homes and possessions taken away. When those wise people are punished, they will receive some help, but many people who join them will be hypocrites. Some of the wise people will stumble and make mistakes, but the persecution must come so that they can be made stronger and purer until the end, which will come at the time God has already set. The Northern King will do whatever he wants. He will boast about himself. He will praise himself and think that he is even better than a god. He will say things that no one has ever heard. He will say those things against the God of Gods. He will be successful until all the evil things have happened. Then what God has planned to happen will happen. The Northern King will not care about the gods his ancestors worship. He will not care about the gods women worship. He will not care about any god. Instead, he will praise himself and make himself more important than any god. The Northern King will not worship any god. He will worship power. Power and strength will be his god. His ancestors didn't love power as he does. He will honor the god of power with gold and silver, expensive jewels and gifts. The Northern King will attack strong fortresses with the help of a foreign god. He will give much honor to the foreign rulers who join him. He will put many people under their rule. He will make the rulers pay him for the land they rule. At the end of time, the Southern King will fight a battle against the Northern King. The Northern King will attack him with chariots and soldiers on horses and many large ships. The Northern King will rush through the land like a flood. The Northern King will attack the beautiful land. He will defeat many countries. But Edom, Olaf, the leaders of Amman, will be saved from him. The Northern King will show his power in many countries. Even Egypt will not escape. He will get treasures of gold and silver in all the riches of Egypt. The Libyans and Ethiopians will obey him. But that Northern King will hear news from the East and the North that will make him afraid. 
and angry. He will go out to completely destroy many nations. He will set up his king's tents between the sea and the beautiful holy mountain. But finally, that bad king will die. There will be no one to help him when his end comes. First John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. Love comes from God. Dear friends, we should love each other because love comes from God. Everyone who loves has become God's child, and so everyone who loves knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love to us. He sent his only son into the world to give us life through him. True love is God's love for us, not our love for God. He sent his son as the way to take away our sins. That is how God showed his great love for us, dear friends. So we also must love each other. No one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, God lives in us. If we love each other, God's love has reached its goal. It is made perfect in us. We know that we live in God and God lives in us. We know this because he gave us his spirit. We have seen that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. And this is what we tell people now. Anyone who says, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, is a person who lives in God. And God lives in that person. So we know the love that God has for us. And we trust that love. God is love. Everyone who lives in love lives in God, and God lives in them. If God's love is made perfect in us, we can be without fear on the day when God judges the world. We will be without fear because in this world, we are like Jesus. Where God's love is, there is no fear because God's perfect love takes away fear. It is his punishment that makes a person fear. So his love is not made perfect in the one who has fear. We love because God first loved us. If we say we love God but hate any of our brothers or sisters and his family, we are liars. If we don't love someone we have seen, how can we love God? We have never even seen him. God gives us this command. If we love God, we must also love each other as brothers and sisters. Psalm chapter 138, a song of David. Lord, I praise you with all my heart. I sing songs of praise to you before the gods. I bow down towards your holy temple, and I praise your name for your love and loyalty. You are famous! And doing what you promised will make you even more famous. When I called to you for help, you answered me and gave me strength. Lord, all the kings on earth will praise you when they hear what you say. They will sing about what the Lord has done because the glory of the Lord is very great. The Lord has the highest place above all others but he still cares for the humble. Even from there, so high above, he knows what the proud do. If I am in trouble, you keep me alive. If my enemies are angry, you save me from them. Lord, I know you will do what you have promised. Your faithful love will continue forever. You made us, so don't leave us. Thank you, everyone. That was day 338. Join us for day 339. We will finish the book of Daniel. The angel will finish his prophecy. And then Daniel sees two more angels. They have a little discussion, but Daniel has the opportunity to ask them what all of this is going to mean. 
the very end of days. What is the conclusion? What is the end of the story? You'll have to join us to see what the angels say. And we will also finish the book of 1 John. And as the elder finishes this letter, he provides some evidence of Jesus and reminds everyone that those who claim to be in God's community will listen to the Lord and that those who do not listen to the evil one. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.